I want to welcome you to the Miley of Photos Coffee Break. My name is Angela Andrew, and I'm joined by Lori Rubin. We are both product evangelists for Miley of Photos, and our goal is to help you be successful with the software. Coffee Breaks are a once a week show where we demonstrate a specific topic, and then we have open Q&A so you can ask questions on a variety of things related to Milio, photography, family history, and so forth. So today our topic is adding a graphic or a text watermark to your photos. So the first thing I want to address is what is a watermark? So historically speaking, I'll give you the definition here from Wikipedia that I pulled up. It's an identifying image or pattern in paper that appears as right as various shades of lightness or darkness when viewed by transmitted light. So like you hold it up to a light source and you can see the imprint through it. Um, they've been used on postage stamps, currency and other government documents to discourage counterfeiting. You also notice if you go buy like fancy paper at a stationery store and you hold it up to the light, you might see the imprint very faintly in that um, of the maker of that paper, which is kind of cool. So. When we convert that into the digital world, digital watermarking is the process of superimposing a logo or a text onto a document or image file. Um, now, the next question is, is why would you want to do this? So some people, depending on how you're sharing your photos and where you're sharing them, you might want to do this for branding. So if you're running a business or you're you know, having your personal brand, a photography business, or just wanting to have some level of showing who you are in addition to the image that you're sharing, a watermark can be a great way to do that. It also provides a minimal level of protection. I will say it is kind of negligible, but it does indicate that, hey, this is somebody's property. It doesn't provide you with any additional copyright protections because once you click the shutter on your camera, your image is protected by copyright. Now, in order to enforce that copyright, you have to register it with the copyright office and having a watermark doesn't necessarily have anything to do with that but it does indicate on that picture, it's a visible mark saying, hey, this picture is owned by somebody. So it will deter an honest person. If somebody is wanting to um, misuse your picture or use it for purposes that you don't intend, watermarks are typically, especially with AI these days, very easy to clone out. So it doesn't provide a lot of protection. The biggest reason you might wanna add a watermark to your photos is that personal branding or business branding. And that's why I do it. I wanna have a really pretty signature on my pictures to show, hey, this is my artwork. Um, if I'm just sharing a snapshot of what I had for dinner. It doesn't necessarily need to have a watermark when I share that on social media. But when I'm working on my fine art photography, I like to add that signature. So people have different reasons that they might add that. Um, and not every picture you share needs to have that. If you're just sharing um, pictures of like a family reunion with other family members, you don't necessarily need to put a watermark on there. You certainly can if you want to, and I'm gonna show you how. So Milio has two different ways that you can add watermarks to your pictures. You can do a text watermark. So this is the easiest one to do. You don't have to have any additional files, or you can do a graphic watermark, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But let's go first to the text watermark since that's the simplest one to do. And right now we're gonna go ahead and do this from the share menu here over on the right. And I've got a picture up here. This is a semi-fine art picture I took at a train museum last weekend. It's some really pretty rust and detail. And let's say I wanna share this in the Mylio community. And I wanna have a little bit of information there along the bottom that says, this is copyright Angela Andrew. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to system clipboard and I'm gonna choose a JPEG file. Let's do a medium file size, high quality, sRGB color space. Personally, I like to turn safe share off and decide which metadata is included. So I like to include my caption and keywords, my copyright and my IPTC. Again, this is a little bit of extra information that's gonna deter the honest person, the person who wants to contact you to license your picture or use your picture, this helps them. If the person's dishonest, this is not gonna help. I do like to turn off people in places, um, people because if there's a person in this image, I wanna protect their identity unless I'm sharing it with somebody that I know and trust, like say I'm sending a picture to my mom over text message. And same with places. There are places that I go and I take pictures. Sometimes those are sensitive areas. And while I don't mind the general area being known, perhaps I wanna protect that specific location. And so I can turn off places so that GPS information stays private. So copyright and IPTC I leave on, captions and keywords I leave on, everything else I typically turn off. So now going down here to watermark the next section, 
When you first come into this, you're going to have this option here, and it's probably going to say none. All you have to do is click on none, then you have the option to go to text or image. I'm going to go ahead and choose text, and then click this arrow here, and it gives you a few options of how you can design your own text watermark. You'll see that I've typed in here copyright symbol with the copyright symbol 2024 Angela Andrew. On the horizontal line, I want it on the on the right, and then I want it placed on the bottom. So that's going to be in the bottom right right hand corner of my image. You can decide how tall you want it to be, and that's a percentage of the size of the image. The margin is how far do you want that out from the side, and then you can choose a font, a foreground color, and a background color. Typically, I leave the background transparent, so that shows my picture through it. And then I just adjust the foreground color and the font. Let's go ahead and jump into font first. And you have pretty much all of the access to all of the different fonts that you have installed on your system. So you can choose anything that really suits you, suits your brand. I typically like to do something that is kind of scripty and pretty. Um, I have this one down here that I've uh, downloaded called Zapfino. I don't think that's one that comes preloaded on the Mac OS, but I think you can find it on like Google fonts and install it on your system. And it's a nice, pretty script. So let's go ahead and choose that Fino and close that. And then we can go down here into foreground color. And this is where we can choose what color we want the text to be and the opacity, which is how much the picture behind it shows through. So I typically will choose white, unless it's something that's a really bright background, then I might choose black or gray. So a white one, and then I'm gonna pull this down to about 55%. That's the kind of barometer for myself where I like that to be. So let's go ahead and hit the back arrow there. So we have our settings all, all done. We can click the back arrow here and say share to system clipboard. So that's done. I'm gonna jump over here to my browser, close that up and I'm here in our community. So I've gone down to the group for share a photo and I can go into the text field here and I can just do a command or control V to paste that. And that brings in my picture. And you can see down here at the bottom, I have a nice faint text watermark. And I can go ahead and put um, a little caption here. Let's say beautiful rest. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit post. And I've now gone ahead and added this picture. It's got my watermark on it. And we can take a look. I can even click on this. You guys can see it a little bit bigger. That's not terribly intrusive. And because it's a nice text, it's very easy. And you don't have to have necessarily the copyright 2024. You can just put your name, whatever works for you. It's very customizable. So a text watermark is the simplest way to go. Before we jump into images, does anybody have questions about text watermarks? So there's something here in the chat. Thank you, Lori, for putting in those instructions. I appreciate that. All right, if there's no question on that, let's go ahead and jump into using a graphic watermark. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my iPad and do this from a different device. And that way you can see it set up from scratch. So one thing to note about working with watermarks in Milio is they are device specific. Just because you set it up on your computer does not mean those settings automatically transfer over to your tablet or your phone. So you'll have to set it up for each device. And while that might seem a little bit inconvenient, the types of pictures I share from my phone are a little bit different from the ones that I typically share on my computer. So sometimes it's nice to have those settings be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and let me go in to share my screen. Okay, so I'm in here in my calendar view and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this particular event that I created. So this is more of those same images from that visit to the train museum. And I wanna share, let's go to this one here. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that. And I wanna share this image with a graphic watermark. So in order to do this on mobile, any of your sharing settings have to be done before you go to that share menu. So we're gonna go up here to the more menu in the upper right, down to settings and choose export and sharing. So again, for sharing this, let's do it to the community again. I'm gonna go ahead and do Actually, maybe I'll do this one to a text message. I'll do a text message instead. I'm gonna do a JPEG. Again, let's do a medium size, high quality, safe shares off, sRGB, and I have those exact same metadata settings set. Now, right now you see that there is a watermark set of none. We're gonna go ahead and click that and choose image. So you see here we have to set, set our image. Now, before you go in and start adding 
a image watermark. One thing that I forgot to mention is that you do need to add those images. So whatever files you want to use as your image watermark, you'll need to add that folder of images to Mylio Photos. So I have a folder from a company called Photo Logo. They created some beautiful signature watermarks for me. And I'm going to go ahead and include a set image. Go up here to this, open up my photos, and I can go ahead and scroll down. And I know it's in here somewhere. There's Photo Logo. And I'm going to go, yeah, just that top level one, choose Select. Now you can see I have a bunch of different files here. The ones that are pure white are actually white text with a transparent background. Now this is something that I actually have already put in a request to our development team to work on this and make this a little bit easier to read. So we'll actually be able to see that transparency a little bit better in the future. So this is a brand new feature, this watermark with an image. And it's one that I have personally been asking for pretty much since I started with Mylio over two years ago. This is something that I've been able to do in other programs that now is in Mylio and I'm so excited, but we've got a little bit of um, tweaking to do to make it better, but at least we can do it now. So I can go through these different ones and choose which one I wanna use. And just by the aspect ratio, I'm gonna know which one is the one that I'm wanting here. Let's, I think it might be that one. Let's go ahead and say choose. Nope, that's not the right one. That's the GIF. Let's see. It's right here in the main folder. It might be that one. And again, we're going to have it come up so you have the, um, on the computer, you can see the file name. Here, it's a little bit harder. So I think that's the low res one. Let me try one more. We'll find this. That's not the right one. Let's go ahead and go with that one. This is actually a circular one. It's kind of cool. You can see the black one next to it. Um, kind of a neat design. So let's just go ahead and go with that one. So again, I like to put this on the bottom right. And the height, I have decided, let's see, let me have my settings written down over here that I like, because I set it up on my computer as well. So I'll bring that up to a 10% or 11%. That's fine. So bottom right, zero margin. I'm going to go ahead and put zero there. And my opacity, I want to bring that again down to about 55%. That's good. We'll go ahead and hit the back. You can see now that the watermark has been added and I can go ahead and then close this dialog, then go up here to my share menu, click share, and that's gonna open up the share sheet for my device. I'm gonna go ahead and choose text messages here. It's gonna pop up a text message and you can see there at the bottom and it's put it in in a little black, a little white box, darn it. That's a bug. So uh, I thought we had this one resolved. We caught it before it actually went live. And it looks like it's giving me an issue right now. So it's showing up in a box where that um, transparent image should be. It should actually be showing just the outline. So let's go back and try a different watermark and see if we can get that to work properly. So I'm going to go back here to settings, export and sharing. And let's choose a different image. So we've got that one. And... Let's try that one. That's an animated. I don't want to do an animated one. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I thought this would go a little bit smoother on my iPad, but you can see that there's still a little bit of work we can do in this tool to make it work a little bit smoother. But keep in mind that I am already on this. And because this is kind of my baby, my request for the team, I will make sure it gets better. So I'm just glad that it's there finally. And it's awesome. So there we go. Let's try that one. High res white, perfect. Go ahead and go back, close that out. And let's try sharing this one more time. Go to a text message. And again, it came up with the white box. I'm gonna have to work with our dev team to see why that's happening on mobile. But to go ahead and let me show you on my computer how this is supposed to look. So if I go over here to the share menu, and again, let's go to system clip where actually let's go back and choose that other image. So let's grab that one right there. And again, this is the beauty of my Leo photos. I can do this from any of my devices and all of my pictures are right there, which I absolutely love. So let's go here to system clipboard. We've got all those same settings. And here I'm gonna go ahead and choose image, which I already have one set up here, share to system clipboard. And then let's jump back over here to the community and share one more. 
And there we go. There we go. And you can see down here at the bottom, it's barely peeking through because it looks a little bit cropped right now, but let me go ahead and finish this up. Let's see, this is the old, um, old caboose. There we go. Let's go ahead and post that. Here we go. And now you can see that's how the image watermark is supposed to look. So it looks like we do have a bug on mobile. I will get that addressed right after this call. But this is how your image watermark is supposed to look. And I just, I love that it's so easy. It looks great. It's non-intrusive. And that's the biggest thing for me when I add a watermark. I want it to look good. I want it to add to my photo or at the very least not detract from it. If somebody looks at your photo and all they see is your watermark, it might be a little bit over the top. So I would be careful when using colored watermarks, especially if you're doing those text watermarks, anything that's gonna detract and pull the eye away from the story that you're trying to tell with your photo, I would stay away from that and keep it tasteful down in the bottom. Sometimes depending on the composition of your image, maybe it's better in the center or on the left. You can even do at the top if that it makes more sense for that particular image. Um, for this particular photo, since there's some open space up here, this might not have been a bad space to put it either. So keep that in mind, you can change up the placement and you just want it to complement your photo and not detract from the story as you're placing it there. So that's how we add both text and graphic watermarks to Mylio. Um, one other thing to note here is this particular image because you're seeing the background behind my text, that's because I'm using a transparent PNG image. If you use a JPEG, that's gonna have a solid background and you definitely will see the square there behind it. And that's not a bug when that happens, but when you have a PNG that has that transparency, it allows the background to come through and that's really helpful for that. So there we go. Any questions about watermarks? I have two questions, if you will. Of course. First of all, if, if you're using your iPad mm -hmm. and you're wanting to share, and the original is on a computer somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Somehow Mylio knows to go find the original. So it depends on what size quality that you're sharing. Um, if, your, if you're looking at it on your iPad, you have an optimized version there and you don't have access to that original, Mylio will share the optimized version. So it'll share whatever quality it has available to it. If you say have a computer that's on in the other room or across town that's connected to Mylio and on and running, and you want to work with that original quality file, Mylio can fetch it. Okay. And and the other question I have is, does the does the file watermark mm -hmm. have to be in Mylio, or can you just find it in a folder on your computer or iPad? Great question. It has to be in Mylio. So what I've done is that folder that I keep all of my image watermarks in, I've just gone and added it as a linked folder and put it in my photos folder. And here it is, it's photo logo. And I can see all of those different ones here. So uh, this is the one that I was looking for on my iPad. And as you can see that the UI for finding that within the dialogue does need a little bit of help and we're working on making that better. So this is the first iteration of having graphic watermarks in Mylio and it's gonna just do nothing but improve. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Darren, you've got your hand up. Yes, yes, good mo morning. Um, good morning. Um, I, I love that logo, by the way. That's really nice. I also have one as well from Photo Logo. Had for a few years too. Um, but a question, a couple of questions. Uh, first off, do you can you put both your logo and text below it? Um, can it combine both? No, uh, not at the just same time. One or the other. Yeah, it's one or the other for the export. Now, if you, what you could do is you could export, bring that picture with the logo back into Mylio, and then add. A text one right you right. so i mean that's that's possible um the, re the reason i ask is because um <laughs> many many moons ago i used to use picasa mm -hmm. uh without having that and i used to always put in a date stamp not a date stamp but a year copyright year and okay. i found that so helpful because when i was going back and now even going back through photos i know what year that i i took it so it's right. much easier before Mylio was about, of course. Um, so that that's one of the beauties of putting the year in like you had earlier. Um, uh -huh. the, the other thing I wanted to say is, can you get a preview of, of this before you have to paste it into those, um, before you have to send it or share it? 
Unfortunately, no. So what I would suggest is as you're setting this up, so the way I got to my particular settings here on desktop is mm -hmm. I did repeated exports to my desktop so I could see that placement, see the transparency, and then I just left it alone and stopped messing with it. So that way, when I come back to it, it the same settings are there and I can go ahead and just do my export without any fuss. Um, that first time you go through and set it up, it is a little bit of trial and error. Um, we do have plans to have a visual preview in that dialogue. I'm not sure when they're going to get around to doing it, but it is on the roadmap. Thank you. No, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. Thanks, Angela. You're very welcome. I'm just so excited that this feature is finally in the app. I've literally been asking for it for two years. So, um, oh, George is saying, are you adding the watermark for one photo or for all photos? Uh, you can add it. So it's being added as an export. It's not being added to anything permanently in your library. It's being added as you export it and share it. So you can choose when you want to use it or when you don't. Um, if I'm just sending a few snapshots from my iPhone to um, one of my family text groups, I typically don't bother with a watermark. The times that I'm really concerned with using it personally is when I'm sharing to Instagram or to Facebook and I'm sharing my fine art. That's when that's important to me. If it's just snapshots that I'm sharing with friends and family, to me, it's not such a big deal because I don't really care about the branding at that moment. But if it's being associated with my photography page or my photography business, that's when this personal branding aspect comes in. And I like everything to look, to have that little bit of continuity across it and have that signature. All right, any other questions? Uh, Ivan, can I take a question about an iPhoto library and connecting it to Milo? Absolutely. So this is an open Q&A. This doesn't have to necessarily be just about watermarks. Um, if you have questions about photography, family history, any other area of Milo, bring it okay, on. I do have a question. Um, sure. I, when I set up Milo um, first on my iPhone, um, I linked it to the iPhoto library. So that's no problem. All my devices uh, have Milio now, and they all have access to those photos. But I know that in order to sync uh, properly, uh, your phone has to be uh, have Milio open, mm -hmm. and um, that's not a typical uh, status for the phone. So I'm wondering if, since all my devices are connected to the iPhoto library, either my Mac desktop or my iPad, mm -hmm. um, should I have linked it to my desktop version of uh, iPhoto instead of doing it to the phone? Should I be moving uh, the reference from uh, the phone to my desktop, which is on all the time? Um, I just didn't know if that would make syncing smoother or faster. So a couple of things. You can have Apple Photos connected to Milio from multiple devices. So one of the really nice things about Milio, let me jump over here to my top level folders view and into my Apple Photos. And if I go ahead and view this as container, so say show as container, you're going to see I have different devices that I've connected to Milio over, over the years. And this one here, this is my iPad. Then we've got my, um, let me go ahead and just make these bigger. We can read them. My iPhone and then my two MacBook Pros. So, and this is probably, I think this is my old iPad over here. And they're all reading the same Apple Photos library. So what happens when my Leo connects is it's gonna look at all those sources and be like, hey, I'm gonna pull these pictures in. And then it's going to say, oh, I already pulled this picture in from this device over here. I'm going to ignore that for now. So it's only going to show those pictures once. And regardless of what device it comes from, if it's all in the same Apple Photos account or iCloud account, it's only going to pull them in once. And that's why the default here is when you say show media in, actually, let me go up one level here, Apple Photos and show media and Apple Photos, it shows it as one cohesive library. So this is everything in my Apple Photos, regardless of which source it came from, because I have connected Apple Photos to my iPad. I've connected it and get granted access on my phone. And I've also granted access here on my Mac. And so you do that by going up here to the Add Media button, and you choose Add Media from Photos for Mac OS. So you can do that from all of your devices. And to some extent, that will speed it up. And if you 
almost never pull in photos or open up Miley photos on your phone, this can go ahead and start bringing some of those images in. Now, I will say that it is much faster to get the newest pictures. So if you go out and you take a bunch of pictures with your phone and you really want to get them into Mylio quickly, the easiest way to do that is to open up the Mylio app on your phone. I find that works the fastest. Doing it here from my computer, it takes a bit longer. That's okay. just my experience. This doesn't uh, confuse the vaults that nope. I have, right? It won't duplicate the, nope. any of the images in the vaults. It will not. Okay. That's a yeah, Milo really respects the unique identifier uh, that Apple has. So it's only gonna it's only going to bring in that picture once. So you okay. won't have multiples in your library. All right. I have one more question if you're okay. Of course. Um, so I had a uh, vault that was uh, that had some duplication in it because I had moved uh, an external drive from one machine to, to a different machine. Uh, I won't go into that part. So I reformatted my vault and okay. then set up two ex brand new hard drives as vaults at the okay. same time, taking down uh, 30,000 pictures from an iPhoto library and 30,000 pictures from um, a Lightroom library. Okay, so the two vaults uh, got to... Um, after 12 hours, got to a point where they had uh, 400 uh, un, uh, unprotected files, okay? So it brought in everything except 400 files. Okay. And then I did some reading, and I made sure to turn all my devices on that had Mylio, mm -hmm. and it seemed to find some of those 400 and got me down to 70 files. Okay. And now all my devices are turned on, and I still have 70 unprotected files. And the other day in one of the uh, meetings, you said to go into the um, metadata and make a very small change, mm -hmm. and that might bring something in that was not syncing. Well, that worked really good for two or three pictures, but for 70 pictures, uh, I even tried selecting all 70 and changing the metadata, putting uh, a word in there, but they mm -hmm. still don't sync. So I'm really at a loss to how do I get the last 70 pictures, which I can view on my screen because it mm -hmm. shows shows you them. How do I get them into my vaults? So what I would do is you're gonna you're gonna find those pictures and then open up your sync panel, and you're gonna take a look at your different devices and see which device is holding those originals. And if none of them have the originals. That could be so when you when you reformat the, reformatted that other vault, that might have been the only place that those originals lived. Well, all the originals were either in the iPhoto library, which never got changed, or mm -hmm. my Lightroom library, which never got changed. So they still exist now. Okay. Um, well, this will tell you where they're located. So this so where they're physically located. So you can see um, if I go ahead and cl click on this image here. I can see that the original of this particular file lives on this vault, on this vault. So it's it's synced up to all of my vaults, is, is what I'm saying here. If I was if I was seeing that as a lost original, it would be a matter of pinpointing which device that original lived on or finding that original in the system and reassociating that with Mylio. Um, but without being able to dig into your system specifically, I'm not sure where to find those. Um, if you're not able to locate the originals over here, I would reach out to support and see if they can help you track those down. Okay, I've sent a message into support, but you never know when they're going to um, get They back usually to get back to you within 24 hours. It just sometimes it depends on um, if they've had a lot of tickets that day, but typically the response time is within 24 hours. Okay, thank you for... Uh... T telling me one one last point on what you just mentioned. So when you select a photo um, in the panel like you have now mm -hmm. on the right hand side where it says original, that will that is telling you uh, where that specific photo is on Correct. each of the devices. Okay. And so you can see that here. So here's my library, mm -hmm. and then what's highlighted here in blue and a little arrow here 
this is showing me the information just on what's selected. If I want to see. see the information on my, all my library, I can switch over here to library and see everything. But if you okay, just want to see information for that one photo, you just click on selection there, or it does that automatically. But if you ever want to verify, you just say, hey, am I looking at information for everything or just this one thing? You can scroll up to the top and take a look right there. Thank you. That makes it a little clearer. You're very welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you all for joining me today. I hope this was interesting to you and that you guys enjoy that new graphic watermarking tool. Like I said, I'm super excited about it and really glad that it's finally there. Um, if you have any other questions, I hope you guys will join me on Tuesday. We're going to be having another Ask Angela session with open Q&A. There's no set topic. You can just come and ask any of your Mylio questions, and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. We're trying to do those once a week every Tuesday, and then on Fridays we have these coffee breaks. So come to as many of them as you can. The coffee breaks are recorded if you can't make it in person. With that, I want to wish you a wonderful weekend and hope you get out there and take some pictures and make some memories. And tell your friends and family about Mylio and make sure you tell them that they can use it for free. So hope you guys have a great day and we will see you next time.